Welcome back to another episode of Big Movie Mouth Off. We're here at Groovy Cinema Pub, our home for reviewing films. I'm Jimmy Martin with Slug Magazine. And I'm Jeff Feist with MSN Entertainment. You can find uh, past episodes of Big Movie Mouth Off, or even current ones, what? on Xfinity. You know what it's Comcast. Uh, Utah <laughs> On Demand. Uh, you can look it up either through their Channel 6 or Channel 1 uh, under Utah On Demand, Salt Lake Alternative. Then there's a neat little scene that says Big Movie Mouth Off. Older reviews, things that are now on uh, either on demand or same day as theaters or now on Blu-ray or things that are currently in theaters such as this film. The Family. Uh, this is a mafia-esque crime comedy, whatever you want to throw at it. Comedy thriller. There you go. Uh, directed by Luke Besson. Actually, he, this is the director of one of my favorite movies of all time, which is Leon the Professional. Also did uh, La Femme Nikita and The Fifth Element. This time around, and he hasn't really done an actiony film like this in a while. He's done no, some smaller. He's, yeah, and, and he sort of deferred the directing to other. Yeah, yeah, he's kind of done the producing role for a little while. He's done some small Sundance film directing wise, but this is kind of his biggest film in a, a few years. Uh, stars Robert De Niro, Michelle Pfeiffer. Uh, basically, Robert De Niro uh, belonged to the mafia. Mm -hmm. He uh, turned a dime. Well, he did turn a dime. He turned a dime after many, 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 many years in the mafia. And now his family, him, his wife, his son, and his daughter have moved off into the relo witness relocation program. Uh, they've basically gone from city to city, causing trouble, and they can't keep in one place too long because Tommy Lee Jones, who is their uh, FBI agent in charge of their relocation, has to keep putting them in different cities so they will stay hidden. Yes. Uh, now we find and, them- And so he can clean up their messes. Yeah, because they just can't stop causing trouble. Uh, so now they find them in a small town in Normandy uh, basically, Robert De Niro pretends that he's a writer, and the kids go off to school. And yeah. Michelle Pfeiffer doesn't really want to fit in. And she doesn't want to fit in at all, and, you know, I don't want to say the term wackiness. There was a time when I had it all. People would ask me, what was it like being untouchable? The question they really should have asked was, what happens when it's all over? You set a good example by snitching on your friends in the mob. We're not in Brooklyn anymore. I don't think there's anywhere further from Brooklyn than this right home. I'm sick of being a witness protection. Welcome to France. Try to fit in. I'm getting tired of finding you a new place to live every 90 days. So, do we still have the same name? No, we are the Blake family. Anything to report? Kids, school. Oops. Yeah, you know, they always adjust better than we do. You're a maniac. Thank you. Let's talk about the complaints I have received. Complaints? Corruption, theft, bribery. I want to see my lawyer. Du beurre de cacahuète. Peanut butter. On the right, after the dog food. Merci. Stupid America. How's your day? Fine. Birds flying. You know what's going to happen to you and your family when they find you? We're here to make sure that don't happen, right? I try not to make my job impossible. There is someone finding. So clean up operation. Get that family out of there. I confess it's been years since I went to confession. Your family's the incarnation of evil. What is all this grief about? Raise your phone. You don't mend your phone. I gotta find my kids. It does. It, 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 it does. it does. It does and it doesn't. <laughs> well, it yeah. does and it doesn't. Because this film can't decide what film it wants to be. No. Is it a wacky mob comedy? Yeah. Or is it a thriller? There's even like some depressing parts to it. I mean, like, right. I mean, first thing about this film, over, over, over the top violence. I mean, I'm, you're talking about a, a teenage girl uh, <laughs> beating the crap out of uh, her fellow students with a tennis racket. But, uh, but, by the way, speaking of stepping out of comfort zone, it's Diana Agron from uh, Glee. From the Glee, yeah, from Glee. Uh, you know, then one of my favorite parts of this film, though, is the sun. The sun is basically turned the, uh, the school walls into a prison, I'd say, where he knows he's wheeling and dealing, he's becoming a puppeteer of this place. This kid likes this kind of drugs, and this guy needs this homework done, and that teacher has this kind of problem, and just starts playing them for everything they're worth. Ag 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 <laughs> against each other. Yeah. Now here's the problem with those scenes. It, then they get cut back and we get scenes of, oh, Michelle Pfeiffer's offended. She's gonna blow something up. Yeah. 
I don't care. No. We get scenes of Robert De Niro. Hey, he's playing a mobster. Guess what? He's going to get a little meta. Yeah. He's going to get a little meta. Okay. And now, I'll say this for Robert De Niro. He's more engaged here than he's been in a film in a while. You know what? That made me despise his performance more in this <laughs> film. Especially because his is the most lazily written of the bunch. Absolutely. I would say, okay, and you're saying meta. I'm going to come out and say it because it's actually one of the parts I, I rolled my eyes at. And oh, I, I, strained, I strained something. In the small town, he's asked to, like, as a writer, he's like, can you come and watch this film for us? And he's like, absolutely. And it's this whole black and white film. And he said, well, we lost the print, so let's watch another one. Let's watch Goodfellas. And all of a sudden, Robert De Niro's sitting in the theater, and he's watching Goodfellas. And oh, boy, is it meta. It pissed me off because I really just wanted to watch Goodfellas instead of the rest of the family. A absolutely. <laughs> I, it's, it's, it's a problem that's bothered filmmakers for a long time. Don't show us a movie we'd rather be watching. It's true. It's absolutely don't. true. Just don't. No. It, and so I was in there going... I, no, I almost had completely checked out until Luc Besson does what Luc Besson does best and has a giant gunfight scene. Absolutely. And that's where I'm like, where was this film the entire time? Where was this? I wanted that end scene, mm -hmm. and I also could do a film with just the son and the daughter. Right! Because Robert De, Robert De Niro and Michelle Pfeiffer are the most uninteresting characters in this entire thing. You could show me just Tommy Lee Jones having to deal with all the people in his relocation program. Absolutely. He was which, even good in it. Uh, yes, spin-off character. Spin-off character. <laughs> I, I'll give you that one completely. <laughs> Two stars, Jimmy. I, yeah, no, I'm right there with I, you. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated. mad because, like I said, I like Luke Besson a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, back in the day, he You're was You're better than this. He was one of my favorite directors back in the day. I, just, I really liked his action films. They were a lot of fun. And I thought I was gonna get back into that, and it turns out I got, like, 20 minutes of it and a bunch of just No, no, crap. no, no, no. We've got some lively, darkly comic moments with the kids. Some great, oh. great, great, great over-the-top violence, and the rest of the film molds like a body in I the was, trunk of the car. I was almost going to give it two and a half, right? Right. Almost. Until I just remembered one of the worst plot devices I've ever seen in my entire life as the way that... I'll ruin it, because I don't care. The way that the, the mob boss finds out that they are in Normandy is a piece of paper from the son's school goes to the trash and, like floats across the ocean or something and gets recycled and then the prison gets it and it's wrapped in a bottle for the mob boss and he opens it and says, what? Uh -huh. I almost seriously like just started threw my notes up in the air and just said, screw it. I almost want to go down to one and a half stars for that because it pissed me off so much. It is really, it's, it's the worst, like I've never seen a story advance like that in such a dumb fashion. Oh, okay. I'm going to say two stars before I get yeah, really mad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, two stars, two stars. The family... That'll do it for this episode of Big Movie Mouth Off. Uh, sorry, Luke Besson, <laughs> not your time this year to come back. Uh, we'll be reviewing more films for you at Ruby Cinema Pub. We're getting into the time. fall season. Maybe some uh, Oscar contenders coming up. Who knows? They, they start coming earlier and earlier every year, just like summer movies start coming in March. So uh, we'll see you next time.